Okay, I mean I'll get the Jane. It's not it's not as bad. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good yeah timeline. And how much was that loan for? Three point one million. Oh, nice. Okay. So yeah, because it was it was six, the construction of six stores and equipment purchase and um the inventory. Yeah, I I, I believe I have it on my LinkedIn. Um, the the chef it was a, about two years ago. His was about a million four loan. Um, the hair salon was, I believe it was like three thirty, three hundred thirty thousand. Yeah. You know, in, in essence, you know, let's say like I think six fifty would probably be the lowest, and it would it would have to get an explanation. Why is it six fifty? Have you had late payments? You know, late payments. You know, missed payments. You All right, welcome back to my channel. So I got a special video for y'all today. I brought on a, a lender. Her name is uh, Shirley. We're just going to have a conversation about what she does, some people that she's helped, and maybe she'll be able to help you get your next approval. So welcome to the channel, Shirley. How are you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. Thank you for having me. Most definitely, most definitely. So I just want to start off by just asking, you know, a little bit who you are and how you actually got into what you're doing and the type of lending that you actually do. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm located in North Carolina. The bank is also located in North Carolina, but we provide SBA financing across all 50 states. Um, we provide financing for um, a lot of industries, um, certainly has helped a lot of um, individuals over the years, been doing this for um, well over seven years now. Um, got, got into it before I used to work at... Um, at, an account, at a law firm, um, doing accounting and finance and stuff there, and then kind of made the pivot over to SBA lending. Certainly, um, a lot of people know about it, but not as many people <laughs> know about it that should and definitely can benefit. It's a, it's a fantastic program that I, I've personally seen firsthand help so many individuals um, reach their version of the American dream, reach that level of entrepreneurship maybe they've already owned a business and you know just needed some capital and someone to have a little faith and and it has taken off um or or help you know maybe you've been working at this place at your place of employment for you know an extensive period of time say 10 years or more and and you think you can do a better job than the owner and maybe he's ready to retire mm -hmm. and you can you can purchase that business um, it, it certainly, there's like endless possibilities on the things you can do with an SBA loan. There are some things that are not eligible for SBA financing. For example, you know, the business has to be a for-profit business. Um, you know, so not, unfortunately, nonprofits are not eligible. Um, they can not be involved in like promiscuous activities such as strip clubs, you Are know, we, uh, things of that nature, yeah, yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Um, they, it, you know, they can't um, uh, be involved in the cannabis business, even whether they farm or a cannabis store. Although it is legal in some states, it's not federally approved and an SBA loan is a federal program. So for mm -hmm. that reason, until it is, federally approved, it's not eligible for SBA financing. But um, other than that, um, the, you know, um, it's it's pretty wide open on the, the, the different things you can do. And, you know, the SBA loans, they have certain criteria that needs to be met, certain rules and guidelines that need to be adhered to, to qualify for an SBA loan. The main things that vary, kind of vary lender by lender. Some lenders, POP lender, which are preferred lenders, you know, that have done an excess amount of loans where SBA has granted them authority to make the decisions to those approvals on those loans on behalf of SBA. There are some lenders that are GP lenders that they do not have that um, clearance with the SBA. Maybe they just are working towards that. Maybe they just haven't done enough loans with SBA to grant them that, that mm -hmm. authority. Um, working with a POP lender certainly... Um, accelerates the process because um, sometimes when you do have to send a loan for approval to SBA, no one knows how long it can take. It can take one week, maybe it can take three, maybe more. It just sure. depends how how busy they are. So so definitely working with a POP lender has its perks. 
So a POP lender is somebody that they've been working with SBA loans for a while. So they're certified. Is that basically what it is? Yeah. So, yeah. So SBA gives them authority on their behalf to make approvals on the loan without having to send them to them to SBA. So the, that lender still has to follow the SBA rules and guidelines and have all those forms that SBA requires. And the file needs to be notated as SBA requires, but we don't have to send it to them to get approval on that loan. We can make that decision on their behalf. Got and you, got you. Guarantee um, secured on that. Okay, so that makes the process a little bit quicker. I yeah, uh, a lot quicker. Like sometimes, sometimes you know, before um, I used to work for a lender, they had they had lost their they they were working toward against their PLP, and we had sent one loan in, and it took six weeks to get back. It got approved, but it took six weeks. Now that's six weeks that everyone is just waiting for them to make a decision on. Um, yeah. So you know, it's. It, it it takes some time. Sometimes you can get it back in one week. It just depends. So so it's in any time that you have an option to work with a POP lender is always recommended that you do. Um, for the sake of time, they've clearly been doing it for a while that they already have that that um designation. Gotcha, gotcha. How does someone go about finding a POP lender? Um, you typically you can find them online. Um, but you know one thing to keep in mind. Each lender, you know, there's like 3,000 SBA lenders in the U.S. at any given time, plus or minus. Um, mm -hmm. And no two are the same. You know, you, you know, to do a loan that could probably be a slam dunk deal to us, it could have gone to several lenders before and it got turned down. So mm -hmm. each, each lender, although they are all SBA lenders, um, they have different motivation, different criteria. They have different credit bo internal credit box in addition to the SBA guidelines and rules that they mm -hmm. follow. Maybe, you know, you're working with a lender. They say they do SBA loans, but they for, for them to do one, it has to be fully collateralized, either with real yeah. estate or personal assets or something like that. Um, some, some lenders maybe only want to do real estate acquisitions for SBA. Mm -hmm. SBA loans. Maybe um, some lenders don't want to do provide financing in a certain industry. Um, so yeah. so each lender is, is different. Each lender has different appetite, different criteria. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Let's talk about Shirley, you know, because we're talking to Shirley. So I know when we talked a while ago, um, I know we both come from an immigrant background, you know, I'm from Nigeria, but your parents are from, uh, was it Dominican? Yeah, I'm from Dominican. Yeah, 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 okay. I was yeah, born yeah. there. And I came to this country when I was seven years old, didn't yeah. speak a word of English. Spanish mm. is my first language. Mm. Um, came here, both of my parents uh, worked multiple jobs. They are both business owners now, um, mm. been business owners for about 20 years, a little over mm. 20 years. They own two restaurants. Mm. Um, but they, when we came here, they worked two jobs. My father used to work at a warehouse for Toys R Us. And then in the at, at night, you know, shipping all um packaging all those toys and shipping them on those um, you know, uh uh um semi trucks to get to those stores. And during the day, he would work as a construction worker. While well, I was working. Yeah, yeah. So um, and until they saved up enough money, and they purchased a business that was a restaurant that was in distress. Um, and they 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 purchased the real estate and the business and um, the business is still standing to this day, um, and 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 so to 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 me personally, small business ownerships is in is in my blood. It's mm -hmm. it's 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 a passion, and I always and and with all the borrowers that I work with, you know, if it's something that we can't work out right now, I'll explain to you why and what you should do to 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 get us to a point where the answer is yes mm -hmm. and or or if someone is looking to purchase something but maybe it's not a good fit maybe we're seeing some very concerning things in the financials of the business maybe it has some concerning trends um i i bring that out to to them because I, i'm not interested in just writing a loan for someone that's not my motivation yeah. my motivation is i want i want you to purchase this business or real estate or start up this business or purchase this equipment to expand your business I want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. I want to see that whenever I pass, you know, because small businesses, they have a, a big impact in the community. 
Definitely. It's not just about the, those businesses being there or or any of like they they have a big impact in the community. You know, the locals work there. You know, employs it. They the the taxes they pay goes to that community. It goes to the school, the neighborhood. Everyone knows each other, and it just brings a sense of community. And mm-hmm. and 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 we want to make sure that those business, small businesses stay around and continue to provide a good impact in the community. And sometimes, you know, it's it's difficult for them to just walk to your, you know, your local banks and 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 get financing. Yeah. You know, maybe you just don't have the collateral or they don't like the industry or stuff like that. And I think that's that's the very good thing about SBA. They give incentives to lenders to lend to you on on deals that are more riskier. For example, a business that is all goodwill has no collateral or restaurants, you know um you know restaurants it could be a hit or miss mm-hmm. unfortunately um hotels you know they were heavily impacted by covid some have been able to recover some have not um but with the sba loan they 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 guarantee the lender uh 75 percent of your loan so the lender now has 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 less risk that 25 percent is what they carry so they they will always have risk but it's much less as if they were to give you a commercial loan mm-hmm. where there is no government back. Um, so, yeah. so, so, so the, 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 the possibilities are, you know, you can do more things with an SBA loan that, you know, some people just wouldn't qualify for a commercial loan. Some businesses just wouldn't maybe because of the industry collateral, maybe personal resources from that business owner or borrower, they just wouldn't have, you know, wouldn't be able to meet certain criteria for a commercial loan. Definitely, definitely. I don't think I'm pretty sure I didn't tell you this off camera. I'm a, I'm gonna be honest. One of the things that drew me to you, you know, the way you're talking about your passion for small business owners, you know, how your parents came up and everything. I can hear it in your passion. I can hear that you're actually genuinely trying to help people, not just riding alone. You know, yeah. obviously, with business, you know, we got to make the money, but your your passion for the business, I was just like, you know, we got to bring her on uh, the channel. So, you know, I'm I'm definitely grateful that you decided to give us your time and, you know, educate us about this. So I appreciate your time. Just wanted to say yeah. that. Uh, real I appreciate quick. that. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate that. I, I think, you know, a, a lot of people think that, you know, the, the economy in the U S is moved by big corporations. It isn't the backbone of this country is small business owners. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think, Oh, well, my neighbor, he's a plumber and he comes home all dirty and smelly. But that plumber probably has $2 million cash sitting in a bank account, you know, and that and and some people just think, oh, well, you you need to be um, an attorney or you you need to, you know, just is corporate that 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 makes the money that makes the U.S. move. And it isn't what led the U.S. out of the 2008 crash was small businesses, you know, big corporations failed. You saw mortgages take a huge hit. You know, mortgage lenders took a huge hit. Um, so many corporations were impacted. Some of them went away. Um, so, so what what helped the economy was really those small business owners. And we really need to be out there supporting them and educating them. Say, hey, you know, you you want to expand? You want to purchase your competition? There are options. There's resources out there for you that a lot of people, they just don't know. They just don't know that those options are out there. Those possibilities are out there and just spreading the word and and educating them. Maybe now is not a good time, but let's look into what SBA financing is. Let's look at the options. Let's look at what your personal financial picture looks like. And let's look at what your goals are. You know, Mm -hmm. for some people, the American dream is owning a home and working a nine to five job. And that's perfectly fine. But for some people is being an entrepreneur. And, you know, startups are hard. Startups are very hard. I think I think I saw the other day, I think it was like 86% of startups fail. Mm-hmm. But when we're doing a startup, um, we, you know, we work in, in great detail with the borrower to understand what is it that you want to start up? Where is it going to be located? Who are going to be your main customer? Well, who's your competition? Um, how are you going to generate revenue? How how soon is the cash going to start to turn over? These are all questions that we ask one for for us as well, but also for the borrower to get them thinking. Um, yeah. uh, and in another way, you know, some borrowers can can reach that entrepreneur can reach that entrepreneurship level is through acquisitions. 
you know, maybe purchase the business from a, from their employer, or maybe they know they've been in the, let's say they've been in the car wash industry for a long time and there's a car wash for sale. Uh, well, let's explore that option. Let's, let's see um, what the cash flow is of that business. How much are they selling it for? Um, what is included? You know, how long has the business been, been around and stuff like that. Recently, I did uh, provided financing for uh, a hair salon in Texas. It was a startup. They, mm -hmm. before they reached me, they had been turned down by three lenders. Oh, wow. And no good reason, no good reason. Um, she was, um, a, she had relocated from Canada here, but she was already a legal permanent resident. Um, her husband had outside income. She had over 20 years experience in the beauty industry. And some lender said, no, you, you know, we she, you, you just don't qualify or no, this is not good or, or, you know, endless, endless reasons. Um, mm -hmm. I worked with her. We fixed her business plan, fixed her projections. Um, I, we worked on the application, submitted it. Within two weeks, I got her approved. And wow. when I told her, she couldn't believe it. Um, and then I said, I said, I told you, I said, I told you if I, I believed in you. I think this is a fantastic opportunity for you and your family, for the mm -hmm. community. Because like I said, she was extremely experienced in the um, hair, hair, um, hair industry, had won many awards, prestigious awards in that, in that community, in that industry. Um, so it's a no brainer and the type of salon she wanted to put in that area, they, they, they had none. We looked at, I looked up with her, all the competition in the area, how long have they been around? What kind of services they provide? And we just finished the construction on, on that business. She's is up and running for several months now. And right. she, she told me I've already ex exceeded my first three months projections. Mm. You know, we, we did <laughs> yeah. We did the yeah. leasehold improvements. We gave her working capital, purchased the inventory, purchased the equipment, such as the hair, blow dry, stuff like that. Um, the the construction did take um, a lot longer than anticipated. The general contractor involved said it was going to take six weeks, but it ended up taking six months. Mm, wow. Um, yeah, but stuff like that happens with construction mm -hmm. loans. Um, but she's open. She um, is super excited. And she's, she, she, I have a drawer full of um, thank you cards mm. and they mean the world to me, you yeah. know, uh, because they're, and every time I pass by certain areas, it was like, oh, I, I'm glad that you see, and you see the business is full, is thriving. And you're like, I'm glad the, yeah. that's, that's what, I, that's why I did it. That's why I helped them. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes it is an uphill battle. Sometimes, you know, um, on the renters are like, oh, well, I'm not really sure. And it's your job as the lender up front to, to have those tough conversations with, with your client and say, okay, why is it that you want to acquire this business? Or why is it that you want to start it up? You, the story has to be there and the story has to make sense. It can't mm -hmm. be a situation where, you know, you've never, you've always been a construction worker, but you want to purchase or start up a restaurant because, you know, you go to this local restaurant often and they're always full. They're always full to yeah. capacity. You know, that that's not a good response. But let's say, well, I've been a chef a couple of years ago. The um the chef for Panera, he's been he's been the executive chef at Panera Bread for mm -hmm. 10, 15 years when I did his loan. And he said, I'm tired of the corporate. I'm tired of this. He's like, I'm a chef. I, I want to be able to to touch all the food. And he just create he just created all the menu for um Panera Bread and he was always changing them and all this stuff. And he bought a small coffee shop um in Denver, Colorado. And he added all this equipment and and expanded the menu. And now it's a full service um a breakfast and lunch restaurant. Um, and, and he was able to do that, but even prior, even him prior, he told me he had been to five banks prior to, to, to finding me. Um, and, and we got his loan approved and, um, he's doing super well, super well. Um, you know, and, and it's just, you know, finding those people, understanding their story. Why is it, 
Um, Because sometimes we also have situations where we have a customer come and say, oh my God, I want to buy this business. It's close to my family. Um, Mm -hmm. My kids live here. Um, I love this area. This is such a cash cow. And we look at the financials and the financials aren't there. You know, there's a lot of concerning trends. Maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, the seller says it makes a certain amount, but when we go through the financials, it only makes you know, one tenth of that, mm. um, and 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 we explain to them what we find and stuff, and and sometimes you have some customers that they just get blindsided and they have these blinders on that they don't want to hear what you're saying, yeah. you know, because they just know they just want to go 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 purchase this business unless you're telling me yes this is a slam dunk deal they don't want to hear it, mm. you know, we sometimes come across that and is our job to explain to them because whether it's an SBA loan or any kind of loan, you don't want to make a mistake because you're still going to be responsible for that loan. So you yes. always tell everyone, let's take the time. Let's go through the financials. Let's understand what the full picture is. How have they been operating the business? How are you going to operate the business? Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and stuff like that to, to make sure of its, you know, longevity. Yeah. That's what we want. We want to make sure that one, you are able to repay this loan, but also that you're able to, to to reach your goals that is not going to negatively impact you financially mm-hmm. you know? and 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 we certainly come across folks like that but mm-hmm. but you know we just have to redirect them um and make sure one that they truly do want to do this and two that it's a good opportunity it definitely. makes sense all the way around yeah definitely okay so i heard a lot of good things so the hair salon lady 20 years yeah. She got denied by multiple people and then she came to you. The chef, he got denied by like five lenders and yeah. then he finally came to you and got approved. What is it that, like, what was the difference in terms of, you know, why you were able to go ahead and get them approved? I know you mentioned the story, but just for the viewers, is there anything else that we got to be yeah. aware of? When it comes to yeah. So, so with her, I said, okay, you know, um, her husband, he wanted to be on the loan because they were 50 50 owners. Okay. Of, of that hair salon so they already had set up their entity and all this stuff so he wanted to be on the loan um and i said okay well he's gonna keep his outside income and as i said, and as I said he made a really nice salary and that mm-hmm. nice salary more than covered their household expenses so they mm-hmm. didn't need to start drawing a large salary from the business right off mm-hmm. so so i explained that and also on some days they go to church mm-hmm. and they're members of the church and they um they they do they provide like the musical um 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 what is it called like the music and stuff for the church so they do all the they bring the systems and everything so you know the church services can can pro- play the church music and stuff and they got paid very little but they still got had outside income from Sundays from church yeah so on that in Texas we couldn't place a lien on their property because of the Homestead Act. Um, so we didn't need their primary residence. So we we restructured the loan to withdraw that salary, you know, that that they didn't they didn't need this large salary that they had factor in. And the reason they had it in there is because a previous lender told them, oh, well, SBA is not going to approve um your loan without a salary. But if as long as you can explain you know, that you do have outside income, that outside income is going to continue and it covers your household expenses. You don't need to put a salary because you don't need it. You know, that if if, if that's not the case, then then we do need a factor and we need to do the math on what your monthly expenses are on your home, um, you know, and for your family, that, that then we'll factor that in. But if we have outside income, we can, we can take that off. Mm-hmm. You know, and and also, you know, like I said, startups are hard, but when you have a proper marketing campaign, you know, you you are a member of the community and you know what you're doing. People are going to come and it's and and as the construction is going on, you know, she was going door to door telling other businesses about about her business and other people's in the community knew. And like I said, just in the first three months, she said she already surpassed her half a year projections, you know, and, and, and that's fantastic. And for, for the chef in, um, in, in, in that I mentioned from Panera Bread, 
uh, the the main reason that he was getting declined for other lenders is he was going to the wrong lenders. And like I said, restaurants are not all lenders have an appetite for. There, mm. there, some lenders do, some lenders don't. And and also with um with his the way he had it, you know, structured, he was going to do a large overhaul of what that business was, and didn't do a proper job explaining as to why he believed. Um, it was going to be well received. Well, he well a after you know asking him questions and and a long conversation with him. Well, he explained he had already moved to that area and he was talking with the the, the locals and stuff and what is missing and and he had done um a, a you know a good workup on his own of the restaurants that are local restaurants that are com comparative to that business he was buying and and to how he wanted to expand. There was nothing in that area for it. So there was a huge demand that was just unknown to those other lenders because one, they weren't interested and two, they probably didn't ask the right questions. And three, they didn't probably want to, you know, they this is what was they presented to them. Do we like it? Yes or no. And that's it. Mm. You know, you you always want to work with someone that that asks you the right questions, that really tries to understand what, what it is that you're doing. You know, yeah. not someone that, hey, I would like to purchase a gas station. Um, oh, sorry, we don't do gas stations. Well, well, let me hear, why do you want to purchase a gas station? Where is it located? What is your past experience? Um, you know, how are you going to manage and operate this place? You know, so there's so many things that, you know, some lenders, they just maybe don't have an appetite for or different things, you know, it could vary. Mm -hmm. So just digging deep and kind of figuring out if it makes sense, essentially. Right, right, right. Because, you know, the everything, you know, has to come full picture and it has to make sense um, because it does have to be submitted to underwriting. There's a, an underwriter that needs to be able to pick up the file and know and understand what it is you're doing, knows why it is that you're doing, how is it going to benefit you, how, how is it going to benefit the business. In essence, you know, you have to think about it like, for example, like when you're purchasing a business, you have to think, okay, well, how do me and my personality and my goals and my ambitions marry perfectly with this business? Mm -hmm. You know, you have to think of it kind of like a marriage. How how are we going to work together long term? How is it mm -hmm. going to benefit us and make sure that we both have, you know, good compatibility? Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes let's say, for example, um, a couple of years ago, um, a guy, he wanted to purchase a gym um that was woman only mm. and and when we got into the nitty-gritty of it majority of the women were muslim women because um they can take off their hijab but they can't do so when there's a man present so it was woman owned and catered to women um although it was eligible because uh, the, another type of business that's not eligible for SBA financing is like businesses that discriminate. So it can be a men only business or a woman only business. Um, you know, so so that one was eligible because although they catered to women, it was open for men. Just no men had ever enrolled. You know, if a man were to come in, they can enroll in the gym. They just never had before because it's catered to women and stuff like that. And so once once we found that out, who the main customer base and the reason they were there, then he said, you know what? I, I told them, I said, I, I feel highly concerned for you because once you purchase this, and it would have been a great opportunity for him because he used to work as a personal trainer at an Orange Theory. Oh, okay. And, and he worked there for a long time. So it would have been a good acquisition. But once, once we found that out, I explained that to him. I said, you know, a good... I think it was like maybe like like forty five percent of the of the pop of the customers were Muslim women. I said you run the risk of losing them because the reason they're enrolled here is because they can exercise without having this on. But if you're there, you're the owner. They'll have to have it on. And yeah. you're gonna leave. Maybe they won't, but it is a risk. And he said, you know what? I agree. Um, and he ended up passing on that. Ended up finding something else down the road. Um, but you know, we found that out and good thing we did because had he purchased it, he may have lost a, a substantial amount of, of customers and lost that revenue that he was counting on to pay this loan, take a salary and et cetera, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of different things happen in this type of situation. 
Yeah, and no two loans are the same. You know, yeah. we do an HVAC that is the same size uh, in one state, and and then we do the neighboring state HVAC, same size, same number of employees, same number of customers, and those transactions will be completely different. Mm. You know, we can write one loan for you, you know, to expand a podcast or whatever, and then we do another loan to expand the podcast. They're going to be completely different. Yeah. You know, same processes, processes are the same, but, you know, you'll be involved doing different things. You know, each business is going to be doing something different. Um, mm -hmm. Just so many moving things, so many components that, you know, you really don't think about until you're in the process doing it. Yeah. But, but, but once, once you do it and you close the loan and, and you see this business high is successful and it's doing well and you're thriving, you're like, okay, well, this process was worth it. I would do it again. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, so, so the chef, the hair salon, are you allowed to disclose the amount they got approved for, or just like a range for the viewers? Um, yeah, I, I believe I have it on my LinkedIn. Um, the the chef, it was about about two years ago. His was about a million four loan. Um, the hair salon was, I believe it was like three thirty, three hundred thirty thousand. Okay. You know. Um, here the the smallest we can do is five hundred thousand up to five million. That's the SBA max. Um, unless there's you know real estate acquisition, and then we could do a five hundred four. Um, mm -hmm. that allows us to go a little bit higher, but that can only be on equipment purchases or real estate purchase because a five hundred four loan has to be fully collateralized. There's no exception to that one, but the seven A is super flexible. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Um, but you know if there is a loan that's a little bit smaller than that 500,000 as long as it's within that 350 range we we can um probably make an exception for um but you know we're open to all industries um but although there are some industries that have a little bit more scrutiny to them um mm. like restaurants breweries um hotels some gyms you know, they just, we, we see a lot of stress right now in breweries and restaurants. Um, and we're also seeing a lot of stress from in, in gyms, fitness, they, you know, places and hotels, they haven't been able to co recover from, from COVID. Some have, some have bounced back very well, but not mm -hmm. all. So yeah. we're really looking at the, uh, you know, still same process, but we, we look a little more closely on on those to make sure that you know it is a sound investment gotcha okay so just for the viewers um 300 is minimum but let's say 500 up to 5 million is typically what you tend to deal with yes yes absolutely absolutely but other than that we are open to 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 all industries um you know we do plumbing business hvacs um um Con general contracting businesses, um, restaurants, breweries, um, you know, child care, the, those daycare centers um, seem to be very popular. Um, we do franchise um, like Camp Bow Wow, um, several others, but, you know, surf pro franchises and even non-franchises. We do startups. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, the very important thing is that you have a, a borrower that has either direct or relatable industry experience. Like I said, mm -hmm. it's going to be a tough sale if you're like, you know, work construction and want to get into the restaurant industry. Like I mentioned, the restaurant industry is a very, is a big beast in of itself. And yeah. you have to have knowledge. You have to have experience working in the industry, in, in restaurant industry, um, you know, to to be able to make sure that once times get tough, you'll have enough knowledge and experience to navigate that. Definitely, definitely. Okay. So I know my audience. You know, we we teach credit and things of that nature. So I know that a lot of my audience are always looking for business funding, whether whether it's a real estate, uh, e commerce, credit related. So that's why yeah. I wanted to have a conversation with you because SBA is a different type of uh, funding. Can we talk about the credit aspect? I know yeah. we talked about it a little bit um, offline. Yeah. I just wanted you to talk about yeah. it a little bit. So so there is no like set in stone, you know, a certain credit score the person needs to have. Yeah. You know, in essence, you know, let's say like, I think 650 would probably be the lowest. 
And it would, it would have to get an explanation. Why is this 650? Have you had late payments, you know, late payments, you know, missed payments? Do you have a lot of debt? If it's missed payment, late payments, is it limited to just one period in time? Or is it maybe it's a habit that you just every X, you know, you just miss payments. Maybe you just didn't have the money or you forgot because um, then that paints a different picture as opposed if we can limit it to a small period in time, maybe you were unemployed for that period of time. Maybe you ran into some health issues and couldn't work, or maybe yeah. you ran into some health issues and you had to use all of your cash to, to pay for that medical visit or for medicine or something like that. You know, that we can get behind of and, and provide an explanation and get the underwriter comfortable. It becomes more of a problem where they have a low credit score, let's say um, 650 or under, and you just see an extensive period of late payments or missed payments, or they just have a really, really high level of debt. Mm -hmm. You know, if they have a high level of debt is kind of understanding the reason, well, how, how long have you had this debt for? What were you using your credit card for? Um, yeah. You know, because uh, sometimes we see people with a lot of debt and maybe they've used their credit cards to go on a $10,000 family vacation that they couldn't afford. Or maybe they go out to eat at fancy places and put it all on their credit card that they maybe couldn't yeah. afford to go so many times. So it's stuff like that because once once you establish a pattern that you just purposely have always been late or missed a payment, it kind of it kind of goes to your character for an and, and the eyes of an underwriter. It's like, well, yeah. this person acquired this debt no he was responsible for this debt but didn't pay as agreed with that with that credit card company or that mortgage lender or car notes and you know we can see that is over a very long period of time that is not just you know uh limited to a small period in time you know to a small period in time um it goes kind of to to their character because they think oh well how how can I be sure that they're going to repay us back? How yeah. are we going to know that we're not going to be in the same boat as those other lenders? And you yeah. know that that kind of becomes the issue. That makes um, sense. The other thing underwriters look for is kind of like I mentioned before that you have either direct or relatable industry experience. Mm -hmm. You know, if if it's someone that has been making let's say over you know six figures for over an extended period of time, but they have zero money saved up, what has been going on? You know, your house expenses is this, what else have you been doing with your money? You know, or maybe it's, you know, people that have been making a regular salary, but they have been able to save and they are ready to invest in this business or real estate. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is like, if there is there is a business owner that already owns the business, the business is established, and they're renting this location and they want to purchase that piece of real estate, we can look at the option of providing 100% financing on that. Mm. But they have to occupy 51% or more of the real estate. So if the square foot is 3,000, they have to uh, occupy more than 1,500 square feet. Um, the other portion is that the business has to be able to support the debt on its own. We cannot count that um, the income from the... 49% lease base as the, the source of repayment for the loan. But gotcha. as long as those things can, um, the criteria is met, we can um, certainly look into doing 100% financing. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. No. Um, so do you have documented how much like you've funded people? Like I just wanted to know like um, an amount, like a millions of you amount. Have you tracked that? Is that something that y'all track? I don't know. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, I do track it. I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, we, we do track it per year. Um, okay. You know, we all have goals that the Benga signs that we all need to reach per year. Um, so yeah, we I, I track it um, year over year. Gotcha. I have gotcha. to look it up to and, and tell you. Um, it's pretty cool. Okay, most definitely. You know, we can get that later. I was looking for, I was like, okay, we could put that in the title or something. But um, so we've kind of talked about, I guess, the things to look for as far as uh, mm -hmm. red flags. Can we talk about some of the green flags to look for? So I know yeah. you said like, history in the business, but just some certain things. Because I know someone's watching right now. They're just like, oh, Shirley's talking, that talking. You know, I want to tap in. 
you know, I'll, um, but I would just want more information, more confidence. I would actually be able to qualify. Yeah. So, so, you know, for example, like when you're looking at a business acquisition, for example, and you're, you're looking at the financials and you see a substantial amount of ad backs, you know, we can, we can, we can, we can accept them, but make sure you verify that. Make sure that you request from the seller or, you know, or the broker, if there's a broker involved, that those ad backs are legitimate. Get the proper documentation that shows, you know, they did, they didn't just pull this number out of nowhere, you know, or it's a made up number. You know, like I said, we always trust, but we always got to verify, you know, that the, that's one of the main things you know, you know, some of the green flags, you know, you could, we, you know, I always tell people, you know, we, we, as the bank, we do due diligence. We go, we do a deep dive of the financials, but you yeah. independently should do one as well, whether it is that you do it yourself or you hire a CPA or a financial consultant to, to go through them with you and make sure, or do a QOE report. Those are very important, especially on those larger size transactions you want to do um, a quality of earnings report if, if, you know, if it's within your budget. And honestly, I think everyone should always make room within their budget to do so, because like I mentioned before, you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to make a mistake of half a million or a $5 million mistake because you're going to carry that for a really long time. You know, it's going to take you a really long time to pay that off. It's not mm -hmm. that you can just, you know, oh, well, I'm just going to shut the doors and it's all going to go away. It doesn't work that way. You know, so so the, definitely doing the proper due diligence. And when you want to start up start up a business, make sure that you look at the area you want you want to start up that business. Is there a market for it? Is there a need for it? You know, um, is there any competition in the area? How you know you know stuff like that. And if it's a franchise, do the diligence on that franchise. Ask them questions. In what areas are they located? How long have they been in business? Maybe they can share the financials of a local franchisees. They do that, you know, that that's not a problem. And um, and, and really get the information um, and make sure that all of your concerns are answered. I tell you, I tell people, even if we get you approved, we we'll go all the way through the closing process, but you're not 100% sure, let's stop and address what your concerns are. And if we can, if you can get comfortable, then great, fantastic. We go ahead and close. If you can't, then it's perfectly fine. The money you've spent thus far is nothing compared to this risk you would, to this loan you would take if you were to sign on the dotted lines. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something a lot of people want to hear, but like I said, I want the best what's for you. You know, I'm, I want, you know, I don't just want to write one loan for you. I want to write this loan and make sure you're successful and that you come back and tell me in a year or two, hey, I'm ready to expand, open up my second or third location, you know? So it's 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 very important to kind of go through that and, and understand, you know, what the full picture is. Well, what is it really going to take? You know, and we always also make sure that, you know, that aside from the working capital we give you, that you have personal funds left over after your injection, or, you know, for a rainy day, so many things can happen. So many things can pop up that you may have not known prior or thought that could happen. And you, we want to make sure that you leave the working capital strictly for the business and not having to pull it from for your personal expenses. So we always look for that, that they have um, a, some amount of post-closing liquidity. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be uh, wrapping up in a little bit, but I just wanted to ask you, I know you mentioned the chef, you mentioned um, the, the hair salon. Would you consider those like your favorite moments as far as getting people approved or what would you say? Maybe oh, was there a favorite we'll loan? Here, that you had? We'll be here for years. I, I tell you, I, I, I love every single loan that I do. There are some people that's a that safe I, answer. That's a safe answer. <laughs> you know, there, there there was one. I'll tell you. I think I think that was the last one I posted on my LinkedIn. I have to post a couple more. So mm -hmm. that this loan was for six Walmart stores, coffee shops. So you see, when you go into Target, they always have Starbucks. Well, yeah. Walmart is doing this, but with small business owners. And this small business owner, he owned a, a small coffee shop and he got into partnership with Walmart and Walmart is going to put him in all 1500 stores. Well, we're oh. starting with six. Walmart wants to start with six and then expand. So we we did the construction for all six stores 
Mm-hmm. In addition to that, this guy had 20 affiliates. Some were businesses, some were just holding companies for real estate, commercial real estate properties that he owned. And there was so many, so, so much intricacies in that loan. He had went to several other lenders, couldn't get approved. Got here. It was a very long process. It was a work in progress. It was always a moving target. It was a ton of work. But he's open. He is so excited. Walmart is so excited. Um, the stores are in different areas of um of Georgia. Some are in Atlanta, some are in the like media areas of Atlanta, but mm-hmm. they have been so well received from the community, such fantastic feedback, and they're doing fantastic. And yes, it was a, a very, very, you know, difficult loan to get through because there's just so many moving parts and Walmart itself is, you know, they have a lot of moving parts as well, but we were yeah. able to navigate that because we had a, a borrower who he was determined and we were determined to get it done for him because we saw the opportunity. We knew it was a great opportunity for him and it made all the perfect sense in the world. Then as you see that when you go into a target, the Starbucks line is always so long yeah. um, and Walmart, they have even a bigger foot traffic than target. And they don't have the, they don't offer those services. So it was a, a fantastic um, opportunity for him. And like I said, it was a very long and extensive process. Um, but we got it done. We we got it done. He he stood by. I told him, hey, it's gonna be a long and extensive process, but you stick by us, we're gonna get you there. And um, and I know, and he even said, Man, there were times I just wanted to throw in the towel and quit. Oh man. But uh how long was, how long was that process? So he first came to us in August and we ended up um, and then getting all the documentation, you know, from Walmart, from the general contractor, the plans and specs and permits and all this stuff. Um, he closed in January. Okay. okay. So with a guy with over 20 businesses and affiliates and with Walmart and all these constructions and all this stuff, I think it was a fairly good um a timeline, but it was longer. Typically on average, SBA loan takes about, you know, maybe 45 to 60, 70 days, just depending how quickly we can get the documentation in and submit it. Okay. I mean, August or January, it's not, it's not as bad. Yeah. That's just a pretty good yeah timeline. And how much was that loan for? 3.1 million. Oh, nice. Okay. So yeah. Cause it was, it was six, the construction of six stores and equipment purchase and um the inventory um, but you know, it was it was amazing um, you know, to see each store open and the how well received it was. And so many people were like, oh yeah, you know, sometimes when I come to Walmart, I have to stop at the Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks down the road before I come here because there is no coffee here. Well, now 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 they offer that, you know, and um they're they're working on for Walmart to integrate them into their app so you can order it through the Walmart app and when you arrive is already ready, okay. you know? Um, so so it's fantastic because not only is Walmart expanding their business and their footprint, they're giving the opportunity to small business owners, local businesses that, you know, that employ local people and even employ even more because now they have to staff these, you know, coffee shops inside Walmart and it's all employed by locals. Yeah, no, that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. That's yeah. Amazing. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate your time, Shirley. Yeah. You know, blessing us with your presence and information and everything. If you're watching this, uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you feel like, you know, you're in that position, expanding your business, you want to buy a business. If you're just related, you know, I'm going to leave uh, her information below for a uh, way for you to get in contact with her. And we'll make sure it makes sense. Uh, with that being said, y'all have a blessed one. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.